and welcome to the 2019-2020 Homecoming Game Tailgate Party. I believe it's the 22nd Tailgate Party and the very first home opener of our brand new field. I want you to check it out. I am standing right here on the 50-yard line um, and I'm doing this a little bit before there are too many people here. But you know, I said that once we got this turf, I think it would be really, really cool to do a turf angel. So before we head out to the tailgate and before too many people are here on the field, I've got to do this. Are we ready? goodness I can see all the little black things flying all over whenever I make my turf angel this is crazy I love it though yay four stools so as you can see we made our way out to the tailgate party if you get a scan a scan the crowd there Jay and you can see what a wonderful turnout we've had and actually it is just the beginning Many of the Forest Hills High School and junior high clubs and organizations are selling um, some clothing and all kinds of really delicious food. So we're going to take a little walk and uh, get a few interviews. And also, oh, I wanted to mention the shirt that I have on. This was being sold by, um, I believe, the cheerleaders to benefit not only the cheerleaders, but also the Forest Hills football team and the Forest Hills Marching Rangers. And I thought that was really neat. I love the Friday Night Lights because as we all know, here at Forest Hills, Friday nights are extremely special in the fall. So let's go take a look and get a few interviews. And my first victim is, hello! My first victim is Jackson Arrington and he is with the Forest Hills High School Wrestlers. Jackson, uh, what are you selling here tonight? Uh, we're selling Halushki and all proceeds go to uh, Forest Hills Wrestling Boosters. Fantastic, so did you make the Halushki? No, I did not. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm assuming all the moms did? Yeah, I heard it's really good, though. Excellent. And I, I, I would be remiss if I would not say what uh, an outstanding season you had last year. We have the state champion right here, Jackson. I am so proud of you, as is everybody else here in the Forest Hills community. Congratulations. Thank you. I am sure that uh, this year you are really looking forward to, I mean, how can you top being state champion, Jackson? Do it again. That's right. I love it. All right. Thank you, dear. I appreciate it. Joining me right now is Mrs. Diana Hupkovich and Julie Ken. They are the coaches of the Forest Hills Rifle Team. Ladies, what are you selling here and what's it going for? We have our sloppy pigs. Uh, my grandmother's recipe for pigs in the blanket and we serve it over mashed potatoes. Last year we sold out, so we're excited that it's going very fast this year. And we're also selling some spirit bracelets um, to support the school. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, it smells really, really good. Did you get a, get, did you get a shot at this food? It's, uh, it looks delicious. I might have to come back and have some. So your season did not start yet, right? You are a winter sport. Yet. That's correct. All right, so what are we looking at here this year? Um, probably about 22 members, um, girls and boys, co-ed, and JV team mixed in with the varsity team. Fantastic. Wow. Wow. I'm so proud of you guys. I know that you are, what, this is your second or third year? No way! The fourth year! Wow. Did does time fly? Yes. Wow. I wish you the best of luck Thank on your you. season and best of luck in selling all your goodies. Thank you. All right. All right. And look who I found in the crowd, two students. Uh, this would be Caitlin Handel and also Emily Myers. And what grade are you girls in? Eighth. Eighth. Eighth grade. They were my former students and here they all growing and, and doing so well. So what brings you to the tailgate? Um, just to get food and have fun and go to watch the game. Take pictures too. Of course. Oh, oh you're taking pictures for your book. Excellent. Oh, they've got the cameras ready to roll. Fantastic. Are you excited about homecoming and the new field? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just out on the new field doing turf angels, and it's really, really cool. From what I understand, the entire crowd will be invited down to the field after the game so they can check out the turf. What do you think? Are you going to be down there? Yeah, I think we're going to go down and try to get some pictures. Or... Yeah. Awesome. We'll see. Very good. All right, ladies. Well, have fun. 
and get lots of great pictures. Alrighty. All right, right here we have the dynamic duo of the Parlocks, Annie, who is the president of the elementary PTO, and Phil, who is our um, choral director, music teacher at the high school. I usually grab an interview with Phil almost every year, right, Phil? Yeah. Yes. And uh, we, we had to grab Annie. We've got all kinds of things going on here. Tell me about your booth and what's going on. We have hot drinks this year, which is um, you never really know what the weather's going to be. So we took the gamble on hot drinks. We've got coffee. We've got hot chocolate. We've got apple cider. So that's what we have, and it's delicious. Fantastic. And I see, Phil, you're, you, what are you uh, nibbling on there? Well, I'm living on some sloppy pigs, but I just got this from the table uh, right over there. I honestly forget <laughs> what organization that is. Rival team, yeah, so it's good stuff. Um, but we are selling baked goods, and uh, our proceeds go to our annual trip to Pittsburgh each year uh, to get a bus to, to let the kids watch uh, some a cappella college cl contest, and it's a lot of fun, so. Yes, it is. I can attest to that because I've attended a few times, and it was wonderful. And yes, we just interviewed the rifle team, and that does look delicious, I must say. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Enjoy your evening, and I hope you, you both of your organizations bring in a lot of money for the kiddos. Thank you. Oh, I was just about to head in, but I ran across these two, and of course, I had to stop and interview them. With me right here is Jules Chunta, and we've got Liv McCleary, and what booth are you working tonight? We are doing the cross-country booth. And we are doing braids, hairspray paint, and face paint. So obviously, the, uh, the dots around the eyes, I love it. I, it looks really, really cool. Wow, so what do you think? Your first year at the junior high, how's it going? Oh, it's real. I like it a lot. It's fun. Yeah. So you don't miss me at all, do you? Oh, no, I miss you a lot. Yeah. Good answer. I'll give you the money later. <laughs> all right, girls. Well, thanks for joining me. Best of luck with your booth over there, and it's great seeing you. Alrighty. Okay, I lied. I was on my way out the door and on my way I saw Dr. Lehman, who is the superintendent of schools. He is out here enjoying the tailgate party and um, actually I wanted to stop him and ask him a little bit about the field. We were on the field a little bit earlier, Dr. Lehman, and um, this is just an awesome evening for a home opener and to show off the beautiful facilities here at Forest Hills. Oh, we're really excited about this. Uh, the tailgate fundraisers have been a tradition in this district for a number of years. Uh, we have homecoming tonight, the grand opening of the field. You can't ask for any better weather. Uh, this is exciting. Yes, it is, to say the least. So, um, boy, I wish you all, by the time this airs, it will have already been over, but I wish the entire community was out here this evening to see all the people, taste all the delicious food, and see these, the, the fabulous football field that we have here in our district. Thank you so much for joining me. All right, so I guess that is it for me. I actually am playing two roles tonight. I have my daughter on the homecoming court. I have to go in there and take pictures of her. We already did a few interviews, so I'm going to go be mom for a little bit and come back out and be the sideline reporter for tonight's game, and I am so excited. This is Kim Hostetler signing off. Take a look at this crowd now, everyone. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Friday Night Lights at the beautifully renovated G.H. Miller Memorial Field. I'm here with Scott Lashinsky. My name is Jim Lashinsky. We're here for the very first broadcast. What a night it's been here in Sidman already. Scott. Yeah, thanks. What an honor to be here tonight. Kind of a historical night here in Sidman, Pennsylvania. There's nothing like Friday Night Lights, but uh, tonight it has a little bit of a different twist. As history will be made as we unveil the, the new stadium. Uh, with the new carpet here, one thing Forest Hills does better than anybody I've been around is community. And tonight we're bringing together a, a whole bunch of different events uh, where the, the public and the community gets to actually come onto the new carpet and check it out later in the evening. Uh, they're going to have homecoming tonight. Uh, we got, of course, the first ever football game played here, a tailgate party where tons of vendors are out front selling food for, to you know, raise some money for their organizations. And it's just Bottom line, it's bringing people together, but the reason takes place between the white lines. We can't wait. We, we were just mentioning before about this, you know, the reason we're all here is because, of course, of the football game between the Bishop McCourt Crimson Crushers and the Forest Hills Rangers. Both teams are coming into the game 
On the downside, Forest Hills has yet to win in four attempts, and Bishop McCourt has only a one-win season, one in three. It's very unusual for these two very high-profile, very successful athletic programs. So we're going to see what happens tonight, and good luck to both teams. Folks, we're here with Brian Bazile, head coach of the Bishop McCourt Catholic Crimson Crushers. And we know, Coach, that you're off to a slower-than-usual start in a program that is so storied like Bishop McCourt. Uh, what can we expect from, from you and the McCourt Crushers this evening against the Rangers? Well, just, just what you said. We hope to start fast. We hard, hope to start fast. The, the Rangers opening up their new stadium night here on homecoming. We know they're going to have a great crowd, so we, we feel we got to get off and get started fast and uh, get the ball rolling real quick. Well, you said about the new field. What do you think of these, these facilities we have at Forest Hills right now? Oh, beautiful. You know, started back when they had, uh, built the field house, and now, now this, this finishes it here with the baseball and the girls' softball. Great field, and, you know, I'm, I'm a proud alumnus and uh, got to play here, so it's great to be back. As you mentioned, you are a graduate of Forest Hills, as is our Forest Hills coach. So you have something in common, and I'm sure that the, the rivalry is very friendly but still very intense. Oh uh, yeah, you know, I got the privilege to coach uh, Justin in the Arena League down in Johnstown and uh, he was a great competitor, so I know he'll have his team ready to go tonight. So, uh, so uh, yeah, you know, I go way back. Uh, his dad graduated me in high school and uh, we go way back. That is interesting. It's great how things come full circle. You coached against his dad and now you're coaching against his son. So that kind of speaks to the longevity and uh, kind of the life you spent around football. How about it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I hope that's a good thing. I've, I've been somewhere on the sideline since 1981, so uh, it's been, but it's been great. It's been a great. I've no regrets. Lots of fun. Well, coach, we know you're used to uh, playing on the turf, so maybe you guys feel a little bit at home here, and uh, we look forward to a great ball game tonight. We wish you the best of luck. Hey, thanks for having me. Good luck. Good All right. luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. We would like to welcome Coach Justin Myers, head coach of the Forest Hills Rangers here uh, on a, a very historical night at G.H. Miller Stadium. Uh, we're opening up the, the, new, the new turf, the new field. It's homecoming. There's a lot going on. Coach, I just want to start by asking you your thoughts on, on the emotions heading into a night like this. Oh, the, the kids are very emotional tonight. They, they're ready to play on our home field for the first time this year. Beautiful facility and be able to come out here, have, you know, have a chance to have a great football game and to see a large crowd here in the stadium. It's going to be a packed house here tonight. We're excited. Yeah, the crowd is really falling in. It should be a great atmosphere. Um, so here we are September 20th. Technically your first home game. Uh, has it been tough being kind of the road warrior so far? Uh, it's tough playing on the road, but also, you know, it builds character. You know, you get a little bit of adversity on the road. Uh, you build character as a team. And, and uh, last week we played pretty well last week. We had a chance to win last week. And we're hoping that uh, adversity we've had will build tonight and we'll be able to, you know, have a win tonight. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. We're looking to do a great game. Follow-up question from Jim. We know coaches start out 0-4, totally unlike a Forest Hills program. However, the way your kids have come on and the heart that they've shown, I know that you've got to be encouraged by all this. Yes, I'm encouraged by our kids every week. We're a very young team as far as football experience goes, and uh, every week they're getting better and better. You know, we come out to practice, they're fired up, they're ready to go, they're ready to ready to do things to get better each week, you know. And, and last week was a tell, you know, we, we, we went down early last week, and we were able to come out and battle back and have a chance to win the game. You know, and this week we're hoping we start fast tonight, you know, and our inexperience has gone away, and we'll be more experienced and able to, you know, come out on top tonight. But Justin, skill people, what are we looking for, for from you with your skill people? Uh, we have a lot of skill on our team. Uh, it's one of our strengths. You know, you got Damon Crawley, who's going to carry the ball a lot tonight. We have Seth Richardson, you know, we're going to need to get Seth more involved. Um, Jake Delick's back this week again, you know, and he, Jake's been carried a load for us for the last couple weeks, you know. And we have we have a, a quarterback that's been pretty accurate this year. Who, who, who is that, uh, that quarterback we're talking about? The quarterback, Zach Myers, you know. He, uh, Do you know him? I know, I know him a little bit. He's my son. I'm hard on him. And, uh, he won't always say that he's that I'm his dad, but you know, uh, but he but he's handled it well this year, and he and uh, he's been a good leader for us, and we're looking forward to you know things to come. And I think that uh, we can second all that. Good luck tonight, coach, and have a great game. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to the east end zone. The 2019 Forest Hills Marching Rangers are under the direction of Mitchell Cooster, assisted by Martha Ringler, Jake Kearney, and Tony Wenzel. Ladies and gentlemen, we please stand for the playing of our national anthem, followed by the Forest Hills alma mater. Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to G.H. Miller Memorial Field. We're here for the inaugural varsity football game on this renovated facility here in Sidman, Pennsylvania. We have the homestanding Forest Hills Rangers coming in with a record of zero wins and four losses, 
and the visiting Crimson Court Catholic Crush Crushers coming in with a record of one win and four three losses. I'll tell you what, I'm not even sure if I'm if I'm really focused in on the players yet. My head's on a swivel. I'm just looking right to left at this new beautiful facility. Uh, really state of the art as this campus has um, basically come together. There's a couple little odds and ends to tie up, but as it's really one of the best in the area from from academic to athletic. What a, a beautiful site. We are honored and excited to be here to uh, kick off the football aspect of things. There's been a couple games played here, some soccer already uh, that I know of, but man, nothing brings a community together like Friday Night Lights, and this is it. A minute ago, you saw some of the officials for tonight's game. The officials for tonight's game are referee Bill Wolf, umpire Brad Burt, line, linesman Joel Mock, line judge Bud Ratchford, the side judge is Todd Parker, and the back judge is Keith Redflick. They are from the Altoona chapter of the PIAA officials. Let's hope that's the last time we mention them tonight. <laughs> As you know, right, if they're doing their job, nobody talks about it. They're almost invisible. They're doing it well, right? And the officials are getting ready to bring the captains out for the Forest Hills Rangers. Captains are number 22, Jake Delick, number 52. Uh, Luke Rebar, number 51, is Zach Vitko, and number three is Seth Richardson. For Bishop McCourt, representing the Crushers as captains, looks like uh, number three, Amari Andrews, number 55, number two for the Crushers is Cole Lichtenfels. He'll be coming out with the captains as well. Folks, we just observed a moment of silence here for uh, one of our Forest Hills, great football coaches. Kevin Smay was a football coach here for 30 years, 30 plus years, and did a tremendous job teaching, working with the players uh, on the field and in the weight room, who tragically passed away this past year. And uh, you may see many of the, uh, the moment of science was, was held here, and you, you can see the emotion of some of the people in the stands who knew him. Great man, Mr. Kevin Smay. The, uh, the pregame, the Forest Hills coaches were representing him by wearing his uh, signature Smay's Gym T-shirts, which I and pretty much anybody else that came through Forest Hills spent a lot of time, you know, getting in shape. And Mr. Smay was our uh, strength and conditioning coach, as well as football coach and uh, a great leader. And um, yeah, he could uh, he could get you fired up and ready for a football game. Forest Hills lost a, a great man. Captains for Bishop McCourt are number three, Amari Andrews, number eight, Brayson Bear, and number 12, Will Miller. This, of course, is a simulated toss of the coin that was held around half an hour before game time. So they're just reenacting this. And you'll also see the Laurel Highlands traditional good sportsmanship uh, activities here where the, both teams line up at the hash mark for the toss of the coin. We have Bishop McCourt won the toss. And they will receive the football at the east end of the field. And, of course, Forest Hills will kick off from the west side. Now the players go across, shake hands with their opponents, and as a sign of good sportsmanship, will retreat back to the benches, benches then. Too much handshaking, if you ask me. <laughs> You know, there are parts you're, of this. You're ready to line up across from these guys and, and run into them as hard as you can. I, I think after the game, you got to. I love the, the customary handshakes after you you go to battle with them. But, uh, man, how, society's getting carried away with shaking hands a little bit. <laughs> you know, there are parts of the state where that uh, different conferences will not allow any of the uh, opponents to go beyond the hash marks, go out to the hash marks even, because of confrontations that have occurred. So it's still a nice thing to see here in the Laurel Highlands. And so is that. Rangers gather together at the 50 yard line after a moment of prayer, bringing the helmets together and ready to christen this carpet. I christened the carpet just a little bit ago, Jim yeah? and Scott. What do you think, Kim? Well, I was down on the 50 yard line and I did a turf angel prior to the tailgate. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. I know. Is that on camera, Kim? Uh, it is on camera, and I got all those little wee black balls 
all over me and in my sneakers. Yeah, it was um, it was pretty cool though. Yeah, I love the feel of it. It's neat. You, yes. You'll you'll be um, picking those little pellets out of your hair for some time. Probably, but I, I if I understand correctly, everyone's invited down here after the game to check out the turf. Yeah, as one of the um, events to commemorate this this historical night, uh, there is experience the field event from 9:20 to 10 o'clock where uh, the general public and fans that have attended can go down and, and uh, take a walk on the field themselves. It, Forest Hills does a great job of including the, the community in, in all these festivities. And we are ready to get underway. Number 42 kicks off for the Rangers. That's Lucas May. The ball goes out of bounds. That's going to be an illegal procedure penalty resulting in Bishop McCourt taking over at the, is it 40-yard line? No, it, the option, they are actually have three options. They could re-kick. They right. could re-kick five yards back. They could take it where the ball goes out of bounds, or they can opt to put the ball in play 25 yards from the free-kick line, which makes it the 35-yard line ah. in this case. Okay. And Bishop McCourt comes out. Three men in the backfield. You got uh, Brendan Bear in the center there, and he's flanked by, it's like Will Miller. No, I'm sorry. That's Will Miller taking the direct snap. Bear to his left. Pretty Seth solid gain there, excuse me, by Will Miller as he uh, swept to his left. Seth Richardson on the stop, knocked him out of bounds after about a four-yard gain. It'll bring up second and six. Coach Bazil from the Crushers really stressed the importance of coming out early and kind of setting the tone on a night kind of filled with emotion and the, you know, the new stadium and the homecoming and everything. Figuring on the Rangers coming out pretty hyped up and ready to play. Wants to take the air out of them quickly. That's big junior Brendan Bear there, number seven, on the uh, kind of a fullback give off the left side for a solid gain. At the ball midfield now, first and ten, the initial first down of the game. I think we can expect Bishop McCourt to run the ball a lot tonight, and I think you may see it. The Rangers take the air, put the air in the ball, and, and pass it up more often tonight. Seems to be their tendency so far early in the year. Nice job by the Rangers stacking them up there, and that's a tough guy to bring down. But number seven, Brendan Bear, who is, uh, believe it or not, this is at least his B sport. This kid can really throw a baseball, and his future uh, seems to be there. No passes put up in the air yet. Uh, Crimson Crusher's moving it down the field steadily. Jordan Bear is Frank flanked out here to the right. Jordan Page, I'm sorry. Page. Bear again, dragging defenders with him. But it, and that's what it takes, a host of Rangers. The first guy might not bring him down, and that's okay. You got to swarm to that ball. They did a nice job. Third and three. See Trevor Burkett there on your screen holding the uh, first down marker. Doing a great job. Yeah, number five, that's uh, Amir Ortega Andrews with the kind of cut back on a misdirection to give Bear a break. Go to uh, maybe a quicker back in Ortega Andrews. And that is enough for a crusher first down. Eli Klein on the stop for the Rangers. Into the main game for Forest Hills is number 34, Brady Sakura. First and 10 at the 40. What's up, 
Kind of a pistol look, a little bit of a shotgun, but with a, with a back almost behind him makes it a pistol. It's Ortega Andrews again dancing around, wrapped up and brought down by Seth Richardson in the backfield. Nowhere to go that time. And uh, the first negative play for the Crushers. Nice job by Forest Hills. Feels like we'll see uh, Seth Richardson's name a lot tonight. You'll see him play a key role in the Forest Hills offense as well as um, being a, a really nice defensive back, kind of hybrid player on this defense. Coach Justin Myers looking on. We have a timeout on the field. Bishop McCourt was not quite sure of the setup of the play they wanted to run. Number 46 was going in motion and Jake Art Artery and uh, they decided let's call a timeout, make sure we all, everything all straightened away. Yeah, at this point in the field, Coach Bazile figured better, better safe than sorry. A, a five yard delay of game penalty here could have really uh, you know, set them back as they, they have a nice, a, a nice drive going. Um, second down and nine here on the 39. There you see Coach Myers, and while we're at it, why don't we talk about the other coaches from Forest Hills. Uh, on the coaching staff, we have, uh, besides Coach Myers, we have Bob Petrunik, Josh Rerick, Joe Carpenter, Anthony Brezovic, Ken Ashbrook, and Jason Toth. Almost every one of them former players here. I don't think Coach Ashbrook was, but I'm not, even, I'm not certain about that. I know the other ones kind of came up through here and just... Uh, Trying to carry on this great tradition. Uh, there's the first play action. He's going to put it up in the air. Overthrows a big fullback, number 46, Jake Ardery, out in the flat. So Rangers ready for the first play action. And it's bring up third and nine, crucial third and nine play. We did mention the uh, the four stills coaches do the same for Bishop McCourt. We, besides Coach Bazile, we have Timothy Hornick, Tom Smith, Quentin Robinson, Levi Cook, Wayne Jones, Dan Santoro, and Ron Talenko. Big third down play. Yes, it is. Great to get off the field here and take over control. Keep it on the ground with Bear. He's close. Looks like about two yards short. Fourth and two. Crucial call coming up. Certainly seems like a place where you go for it. And it also would probably be a place where you'd hand it back to your bread and butter guy, Mr. Bear. All the all the best, best plays, excuse me, on this drive have, have come from number seven. I would be surprised if it goes anywhere else. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We have a look like a quick start by Bishop McCourt. If that's the case, it's going to take him back five. Let's see what the officials say. Both sides pointing there as they like to do. Yes, false start. Not a false start. Ah, Coach Bazil can't like that on fourth and short. No. Referee Bill Wolf with the signal, and first time we've heard from him via penalty. It's a good job by the Ranger defensive lineman there. That's number 52, Luke, uh, Luke Rebar. When that, when that player flinches, you can come across and make contact. That's what he did. Ah, oh, we got fourth and seven. Will they go to the air? Yes, they will. Mm. Ah, I, think he, I think the forward progress is going to get him there. Yes, it does. Eli Klein made the tackle for the Rangers just beyond the line to gain. And that's Grant Gina Jacquet for the uh, Crushers, number one there. Kind of a little curl in the flat. A uh, little comeback. Nice conversion by Bishop McCourt. The drive continues. Down to seven minutes and 16 seconds to play in the first quarter. Rolls out again, has Ardari in the flat. 
just gets rid of the ball, I think, before he goes out of bounds. There's a late flag coming in. And I think they're going to call a late hit. That'd be a terrible call. <laughs> terrible situation on for Forest Hills. I'm not sure if it was a terrible call. Well, that's where that's why I'm here to help you out. <laughs> what was the penalty? Oh, intentional grounding? Intentional grounding. Five yard penalty lost to Dons. That's an excellent call. Yeah. The <laughs> now, there's a big difference between high school and college and professionals. Uh, high school quarterback can roll out of bounds and he cannot ground the ball intentionally if he's out of the pocket. Uh, in in yeah. the college and the pros, if they do that, it's, uh, it's legal, perfectly fine. And that's a big penalty because it's five yards from that spot yeah. plus a loss of down. That's good clarification for those, those people who you know, watch ball on, on Sundays. That's a big difference. Bear just keeps those legs moving again. Nice gain, but it's, it's uh, still third and long due to the penalty. Looks like third and about 13. Yep. If nothing else, it's a clock-eating drive Down for to, Bishop yeah. McCourt. And we have a timeout on the field. Officials timeout. Officials timeout. I believe we're going to send numbers, let's see. Number six has to go out probably for a play. That's Jordan Page. I'll bet it's an equipment issue. And he'll have to be out for a play. In for him is number one, Grant Gijonet. Number six, Jordan Page had a, a headband issue. There's strict equipment rules all over the PIAA, and he had a, a headband that where the, the, the tail of it came out the back of his helmet. You see him get rid of it over there on the sidelines. He'll be coming back. Big play, third and 13. Here we go. Just a quarterback keeper. Rangers got to string it out. He cuts it back in, runs over a couple of Rangers and stretches ahead for the first down. Really nice run by quarterback Will Miller. Court started this drive at their own 35-yard line, and now they are down to the Forest Hills about 18, 19-yard line. Oh, he cuts it back up the middle again. Into the end zone, number 12, Will Miller on a big 19-yard touchdown run for the Crushers. A lot of Brandon Bear, a lot of Will Miller, uh, and a lot of just... Quarterback keeps or gives a couple of successful passes, but really nice job of Bishop McCourt just matriculating the ball down the field. Five minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And we have a 19-yard run by Will Miller. Kim, you like that word matriculating? Very expensive. That's a very expensive word. Thank you. Yes. Want to kick the extra point. Looks like number five, is it? No, I'm sorry, that's 58. Uh, Will Hazlitt knocks it through. Nice looking leg. All right, Rangers start down 7 nothing here. Uh, defense did some good things, kind of swarmed to the ball, maybe got a little tuckered out. But it takes a village to bring down some of these uh, Bishop McCord crushers. And you're going to have to keep swarming to the ball. Let's see if we can answer that score. You know, an interesting rule change that has occurred this year from the PIAA is the timing rule. And basically, it, after a play is over, the, the timer is instructed on a regular play to start a 40-second clock. And that 40-second clock, if, if, even if it's a long pass downfield and it's incomplete, 
that 40 second clock will start and that means they have to have the snap off in 40 seconds however if the ball is uh, if there's a timeout, let's say, for an uh, injury or a penalty or whatever, then the referee will chop it in and it'll be a regular 25-second clock as it has been in the past. So, uh, you know, that, that's kind of an interesting timing rule. That Who is, keeps that 40-second that clock? It would be the official timer in the booth. Oh, in the booth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you'll see it on the field also. It'll be posted instead of 25. It'll come up as a 40. I see. Number 58 for Bishop McCourt. Will Hazlitt will be kicking off to either number three or number five. Number three is uh, Seth Richardson and five, Damon Crawley for Forest Hills. Wow, really nice kick. Driving Seth Richardson all the way back to the, the goal line. Cuts it back up the middle, and he's brought down there around the 16-yard line. First and 10 for Stills. Not the best field position, but let's see what they can do with the offense now. Well, the kicker is a weapon, isn't it? I mean, you, you just saw him nail an extra point, and then uh, Will Hazlitt puts a, a, a kickoff down to the goal line. You don't see that in every high school football game you go to, and it's it certainly plays a factor. Absolutely. All right, Seth Myers brings him out. Zach Myers. Seth Myers. Zach Myers. Zach, that's I meant. I'm sorry. Seth Richards. Yeah, Seth that's Richards. Right. No, gets mixed up with those two, and it's a first play as a running play. Zach is a junior quarterback. Second and six for Forest Hills. Out over the wall is Devin Brezovic, the center. Damon Crowley on the carry. Mentioned Devin Brezovic too, just a freshman. Uh, not every day you see a freshman take, the, take over a spot, especially on the offensive line, especially as a center. A um, little undersized as of right now, but uh, as Coach Myers was telling us, you know, he, uh, he just earned that position, uh, comes to work hard every day, and um, kind of learning by fire sometimes, but and he's in charge of making some line calls and some blocking adjustments as he goes up there too, so a lot on a freshman's shoulders, but it's only going to make him better in the long run. Third and seven. Here, here comes Crawley. Right towards the sideline, sticks it up in there nice and hard, and he's got a Ranger first down. Damon Crowley is a sophomore. Coming into the game, he has 168 rushing yards, and uh, I believe he would be considered the, one of the fastest guys on the Ranger team. So the Rangers come out and answer that touchdown with a nice first down of their own. Let's see if they can Take the ball the whole way down the field. Yeah, last thing you want to do is, is come out three and out when your defense was on the field and tired. So, nice to see this drive continue. Ball's on the carpet. Uh, McCourt has recovered it. Is that just a, a, a missed snap? This connection on the, on the exchange from center to quarterback? I'm no, not sure. Number two, Cole Lichtenfeld selling the loose ball for Bishop McCourt, and they will take over at the Forest Hills 29-yard line. Uh, he licked and fell right on the ball. <laughs> oh, good one, Scott. <laughs> <sighs> See what I've had to put up with for years, Kim? Oh, and, and I have to put up with it at school. Ah. But it's okay. We love you, Scotty. Yeah, I can tell. We do. All right, Bishop Court sets up again. Deep in Ranger territory. Defense really needs to stop here. If you're McCord, I think you just keep keep it on the ground, take the air out of the ball. Pound the rock. Yep. And there See goes if Bear. anybody can stop Brendan Bear, and uh, we haven't found that guy yet. You know, based on common opponents, they have already played three schools that are the same. They played Richland, and Richland beat Forest Hills 54 to 12. McCord held Richland scoreless in the first half and came back and won. Richland won 28 to 14. That was the first opening week. So you can see right there that 
uh, there, there seems to be a bit of a dominance in that score. Bear again. Even when that boy is wrapped up, he's able to get a few extra yards. Tough runner. Big, strong kid listed here at 6'1", 215. And that's, that's 215 pounds of muscle <laughs> coming hard at you. Other comparison scores uh, against Bedford. Four Seals lost 41 to eight. And Brian Bazile's Crushers lost 13 nothing. Uh, Somerset, we, Four Seals lost by four, 24-20. And Somerset lost to McCourt 20 to seven. So see how things pan out. Number yeah. 46 with the ball. For Bishop McCourt. That's the Jake Artery. Yeah, it's full back there. Jake Artery caught a nice pass earlier. First and goal here from the three. Make it the four. And three. Okay. Scoreboard changed it to three now. Inside handoff to Bear, he waltzes into the end zone again. Two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Brendan Bear with the touchdown. And there's that fast start Coach Bazile was looking for. Like you said, only two plus minutes to go in the first quarter. Rangers already behind two scores. I really need to answer here. Don't let that emotion go that you were riding coming out of the locker room. There's a lot of football left. Let's get something going. Has it again with the extra point attempt. Soccer style kick is true. So with two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Bishop McCord has opened up a 14-0 lead. Rangers had some signs of life on that opening drive. Turnovers are, are a killer. If it wasn't for that fumble, you know, we, we were able to move the ball. A couple successful plays. Can't gift them the ball back in, in your own territory. Both these schools come in with an extremely rich tradition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's funny because uh, so much has been spoken of with about Coach Bailey, who coached here for 45 years and uh, amassed uh, an unbelievable 375 wins, uh, you know, ranked so highly in the state, honored statewide and nationally with honors, uh, coaching honors. And it's an extremely tough thing for uh, someone to come in, as Justin Myers has done, with this program and you know the he is in a building process he has his young kids on his squad they're, they're enthusiastic they're they're never quitters and you know for them to for him to come in and follow the legend of coach bailey so to speak and try to establish himself do you realize scott there have only been three coaches in four sales history that started amazing. out with chuck chuck sponsky then followed by bailey and now justin myers the third coach in four sales history that is uh, that's saying something. And I know he, he hopes to be here a long time and leave his legacy along with those other two coaches. Another note on Coach Bailey. Uh, if, if you're wondering what he's up to, he's leaving for Florida tomorrow morning. Uh, first time he's ever ever done that in football season, that's for sure. And um, he's, uh, his wife's very happy about that. I can, I can attest to that. And, um, that's because talked, you're his next-door neighbor. Yeah, and I talked to Coach the other day. And that's just what you call him. I'll always call him coach. And he um, said he doesn't miss the practice, but he, he misses Friday nights immensely, and he thinks he always will. All right, Rangers come out first and 10. Ball is at the 27-yard line. Myers back to pass. Got Seth Richardson sneaking down into double coverage. Did Seth pull it away? What a catch. What, what a, a catch. catch. What a pass by young Zach Myers. Uh, I love it. Take a shot. You're down two scores. 
get your get your best athlete, one of your best athletes out there uh, wide. And uh, you know what? Credit Bishop McCourt. They they had the coverage. Seth went up and made the play on the ball. That's right. Down to the 47-yard line of Bishop McCourt. Great play. Way to get them. Perhaps a play like that will open up a little bit of the run now. Exactly. Change the momentum a little bit. Maybe the safeties and corners take a step back a little bit, and you, you got the running. Here's Crawley trying to exploit that. Good hard run. Gets a gain of about five off the left side. Quick feet. Crawley has quick feet. Second and five. Looked like he hurt his thumb or hand or something there. Did you notice that whenever I he got up? I didn't see that. He was shake shaking it off a yeah. little bit. Did he stay in the game? Yep. Yes, he did. Yes, okay. he did. Ben Roethlisberger was shaking his elbow at the game the oh. other day, and he's out for the season. Crawley in motion. Inside handoff again. Hang on to that ball. Oh, I know. <laughs> Looks like uh, you know, McCourt's really trying to put a hat on that football. Brings up a third and one. Big third down play for the Rangers. Big play, certainly four down territory, I would assume. Uh, I don't know if a punt really flips the field all that much for you here when you have a little momentum going down two scores. You know it's early. Ball is at the 38 yard line. What the heck, let's third just get it one. on third down. Yeah. That's a first down run by number 22, Jake Delick. Uh, came in motion. Kind of pounding that left side right now. Nice job by the offensive lineman over there, opening up a little bit of running space. First and 10, four stills at the 32-yard line of Bishop McCourt. This is their first penetration into McCourt territory. Delicate motion, and he may have picked up one or two. Yeah, not much there. That's going to end the first quarter of play with the Rangers down 14 to nothing, but on the move. As we begin the second quarter, Rangers coming out with the ball, 31 yard line of Bishop McCourt, second and nine. A nice sustained drive from the Rangers to start at their own uh, 17, 18 yard line. Pretty quickly moving first quarter. And with McCourt dominating the time of possession. Yeah, a lot of running plays. We'll keep that, keep that clock moving. Play action pass to Delic this time. Meyer's going to air it out deep, give his receiver a chance. Oh. This time Bishop McCourt makes the play in the end zone. And number one, Gina Jacquet brings it out of the end zone across the 20-yard line, and the Crushers take over again. Second turnover on the night. Huge play. Yeah, the, the ball was a little bit behind and uh, short of intended receiver. Brad Madigan. And uh, just... Couldn't get in there to break up the pass. Sometimes an offensive receiver has to turn into a defensive player uh, when the pass is thrown that way. Very close to being a, a touchdown, too. He seemed like he was, might have gotten a hand on it, but just couldn't quite pull it away from number yeah. one from McCourt. Yep, great man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, Gina Jacquet really on an island out there. Trusted to cover man-to-man. -man. Did a fantastic job. And, um, yeah, Madigan tried to adjust back to it. Couldn't quite make it. There's Miller again on the keeper. Nice tackle that time. It was that looked like maybe Brezovic in on the tackle. Second in a long eight. Fake to Bear, obviously drawing a lot of attention. And Miller kept it that time for a gain off the left side. Brings up third and two. 
You know, Scott, both of these coaches, Justin Myers and Brian Bazil, they have a lot in common. They both played for Coach Bailey. Uh, Coach Bazil actually coached uh, Coach Myers in professional football down in the Johnstown League, the J Dogs. The uh, Arena League, yeah. The Arena League, right. As he was the quarterback. Oh, oh, nice tackle in there. That's Damon Crawley coming in low and grabbing onto a leg and waiting for some help. And that's that's what you do against an athlete like like Brandon Bear. But absolutely, uh, yep. Crawley led the charge, and a host of Rangers came to help him out. And, and we're talking about uh, Coach Myers. Coach Myers was the quarterback of the Rangers football team that played in the state championship game in 1994, lost in double overtime to Mount Carmel. You might remember that. You will remember that team. I might remember that. I was a sophomore on that team. And it was an, an unfor unforgettable run. What a, what a great collection of seniors. Oh, a low snap. Uh, we got a low snap. Fielded nicely. Crawley calls for a fair catch, then backs away, and will let it bounce. Be careful down there. Ranger got a little close to it. Number six, Jordan Page, down the ball for Bishop McCourt, was down there, and Forrest Hills will put the ball in play. At the, let's see, 29-yard line. That was the uh, first stop, really, that uh, Forest Hills has had, has put on Bishop Court. That's a, that's a big plus now. Let's see if we can turn that around with nine minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Forest Hills takes over. Yeah, great stop. Great to see him punt. And a, a, another really nice job out of the kicking game for Bishop Court. Got off a nice punt to uh, flip the field. And talking about Coach Bazil and places he's been coaching in the Johnstown Arena League. Uh, he's coached at a, a couple colleges. I want to say Frostburg. Uh, he's also coached the uh, Pittsburgh Arena team while it was you know, still in existence, the Pittsburgh Power. He was a coordinator out there uh, under the, the ownership of Pittsburgh's Lynn Swan, who was an owner of that team. And uh, Brian got to work under him. So... As he said, he's been on a sideline somewhere or another for most of his life. And these coaches are very good friends. They have a lot in common with their, uh, their relatives, their history. It goes back a long way. And sometimes the uh, common denominator is, you know, four stills itself. They both graduated from this school and are, are, are proud to say that. Four stills splits them out. They have a second and ten. Another little pistol look here with Myers, uh, and he's got Crawley behind him. That's where the ball goes. He squirts through a little opening, almost breaks it to the outside. Nice job by number five, Damon Crawley. Third and about two at the 34-yard line. Third, I'm sorry, 32-yard line. Four stills breaks the huddle. Third and two. Big third down play. Yeah, it is. Love to see this drive continue and end in some points. Myers now under center. Gives it to the up man. That's number 20. 20 24, I believe it was. Oh, sorry. Bryson Rerick. Brings up a fourth and four. Looks like a punt team is coming on as you can't turn it over. We still got a ball game here, folks. Rangers defense just got to stop. Can't give the Crimson Crushers the ball here at their own 30 or at our own 30-yard line. So into punt is number two, Brad Madigan. Fields the snap. It's off a solid punt. Directional heading out of bounds. Uh, nice job heading right towards uh, Kim down there on the sidelines. Went out around the 27-yard line. Get those hands ready, Kim. Uh, it, I actually got hit before. 
So that was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't so bad. Hit by a ball concerned. or yeah, a player? Yeah, hit by the ball. Okay. It, it hit the, the camera. I was more concerned about the camera, actually. Yeah. You got to be very happy with the weather this evening, Kim. Oh my I know gosh, we've, it's beautiful. We've worked together before, and you you were either soaking wet or freezing cold. Yeah, it, it is like. a gorgeous night. And what about that sky over there, over the field house? My goodness. Gorgeous. First and ten, Bishop McCourt at the twenty-seven yard line. Little jet sweep action there for uh, number five. He springs it to the outside. Now oh it's turning no. on the Jets. It's a foot race. Makes a cut back inside. He's to the 10, five. But touchdown. Folks, there is a penalty marker on the field. We'll have to see what this is all about. Oh, I see everything. Two flags. It looks like we have, I'm going to say, a hold on the court. Let's see if that's true. Yes, we the do. preliminary call. You can see there's not a lot of celebrating like Coach Bazil in those white shirts over there. I think they they saw it happen. Um, I did not see, you know, watch watching the play develop. You know, there's not a real whole lot of decision making involved with this. Uh, you can give them a touchdown or you can bring it back and go back 10 yards and try that all over again. Yeah. Well, Rangers catch a break. You kind of feel the air go out of the stadium when yeah. you see that happen to go down. Three, store, three scores, excuse me, at halftime would have been a, a pretty tall mountain to climb. Now, maybe a, a momentum switch shift here as uh, McCourt will have first and long. First and 18 to go. Big, big break for the Rangers. Well, you know what? The hold was at the point of attack. It yeah. may have been what sprung the Might run. Have sprung the play. Coming in late now from a court. Bryce Bear, that's uh, the cousin of Brendan, who we've been calling all night. Goes Bryce Bear motion. goes in motion. Fakes the jet sweep this time. Miller keeps it, bounces it out to the right side. Nice job by the Rangers stringing it out for a loss. Like about second and 21 to go. Now, McCord has not thrown the ball much because they really have been uh, able to take chunks of yard, yardage on the ground. Let's see if they put the ball in the air now with second and 21. Second and 21. Sometimes time for a you know, little screen pass if you have that in a bag of tricks. Or you give it to Brennan Bear. Rangers may be starting to uh, have some confidence in bringing him down a couple times now. Uh, he's been he's been stopped where in the first quarter he was really, really effective. Maybe starting to slow down. That could be big. Gain of three. Third and 18. <laughs> Crushers break the huddle. Still think with a two-score lead, they're fairly conservative or safe here. You don't want to risk a turnover at this point in the field. Yeah, early movement there by Bishop McCourt. Kind of shooting themselves in the foot on this drive. It's a pre-snap penalty, so there is no decision. It's five yards. Back we go. If nothing else, the Rangers are certainly alerted to this jet sweep action. The, twice there's there's been penalties when that was the play dialed up by Coach Bazile and the Crushers. Um, you know, will it pop or not? We don't know. Before we, We've been able to get free looks at it, if you will, that that is coming and uh, to adjust. And as you said, you know, we're third and long, but we're deep in our own territory. Maybe they want to be conservative now. Rather than risk a, a turnover, they can, they, their kicking game has been proven to be very strong. Right. Ooh, a high nice snap. snap. Nice job. Far side of the field, host of Rangers over there. Bottom of the pile for the Rangers, number 76. It's Devin Brezovic. Devin Brezovic makes a stop. 
a freshman. And of course, of course, McCourt will go into punt formation. And we have Damon Crawley and Seth Richardson back for the Rangers. Crawley uh, limping a little bit there, maybe shaking out a cramp. Low line drive kick, sometimes returnable. Let's see if Seth gets a chance. He, he does, does run up and gets it on one hop. Hang on to that ball. The ball pops out. And Bishop McCord is recovered one. by Grant Gina Jacay. Grant Gina Jacay. And that is a huge ah. turnover. And McCourt, they just signaled officially McCourt did recover the loose ball, put it in play at their own 40-yard line. At, I'm sorry, Four Hills 40-yard line. Bubble Talk about flipping the, flipping the field. Wow, oh my goodness. Boy, really just taking the air out of things. Forest Hills defense benefiting from some, some penalties and making some really, really nice stops. And the special teams this time coughs it up for a third turnover. I mean, you're only down two scores, but you have three turnovers at least to this point, only down two scores. We'll see if Bishop McCourt can capitalize on this latest miscue. Once again, McCourt is not quite on the same page with their personnel. Number 75 comes into the game late. Four minutes and 57 seconds with that turnover. Left and go in the first half. Miller keeps it. Met by, I believe, number 52, Luke Rebar. Excuse me, that's 22. I want to get this right. He made a nice tackle there. Oh, that's Jake Delick. I'm sorry. Of course. Second and seven. And Bishop McCord intent, content to um, take as much time as they need here as you see that play clock on your screen winding down to 10 seconds. And they're okay with that. If they can score as the half expires, that's their ideal situation. Oh, artery stacked up there by number 24, the Steelers. Steelers, excuse me. <laughs> you can see where my head is. That's Bryson Rerick in there. Nice I haven't tackle. seen the Steelers make a tackle behind the line yet. I was just getting my, my hopes up. Great job. Another third and long, though, for the third, Crushers. Third and six. Mr. Elias, our, our tech guy, doing a great job for us with all this equipment. He's on his third plate of food here in the first half. Really <laughs> on a nice pace. <laughs> oh, pass is high. Oh. Yep. Over the head of the ten receiver, I thought for a minute we might have had a ranger in position to, to get that yeah. ball. And, you know, had it been tipped perhaps by the intended McCourt receiver, he would have had a chance for it just out of his reach. Uh, we talked a lot about the uh, good kicking game of Bishop McCourt, but this uh, out of their range even, as the ball's on the 37-yard line, that would make for a 50-plus yard attempt. Uh, so yeah, I imagine they're going to take a shot here and go for right. it. Fourth and six. 87. Another big play. Can the Rangers get off the field one more time? Miller oh, dropped the pass. There's screen. that screen we mentioned earlier. Hardery makes a cut back towards the middle, but then back bounces out to the left side. Hard to bring down. Seth Richardson hangs on, and he's helped out there by Nate Harris to uh, finally corral him. But what a conversion by Bishop McCourt. Wow. Big fourth down and conversion. Puts the ball first and 10 at the 12-yard line with 2 minutes and 58 seconds on the clock. You know, the shot that you see right now on your screen, you're looking at where the, the softball backstop is going to be when this field converts to softball in the spring. What a multi-complex we have here. You can see the, the dugout still under construction there on either side. Yeah, it's going to be neat. Bear with the ball. Spins back to the middle. 
Seth Richardson in there on the tackle with some other Rangers, but he is down inside the 10. It's a seven yard gain, second and three, maybe about the five yard line. Scott and Jim, I overheard uh, Dr. Lehman, our superintendent, talking to the Tribune reporters, and they said that he said that uh, the goalpost there was just put in literally about an hour before uh, the game started, that they had just finished up. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the one on the east end right here. Hmm. Wow, just in the nick of time. Just huh? in the nick of time, exactly. Wow. Bear spins, keeps his balance, bounces to the outside, just stiff-arming Rangers as he bowls his way past the pylon and into the end zone. It was the Crushers a 20 to nothing lead as we wind time down here in the first half of play. On to attempt the extra point. Hazlett again in kick formation. Two for two so far in the night. Looks like we have a little premature movement there by the Rangers. They may have jumped, broken ah, the plane. I thought, I thought Bishop McCourt. Oh, yeah, nope, you're right. Somebody we had a jump there. first. Yeah. Full start, that'll push Hazlitt back another five yards. The way he was booting, he booted the first two, that shouldn't make a difference, but you right. never know. Yeah, he certainly has the leg to get it there. A doink and through. Something good. I thought it caught the upright there. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Goal posts were firmly planted in the ground, I guess, because they're, they're still standing after that doink. So, with one minute and 39 seconds to go in the first half, Bishop McCourt is now on top 21 0. And as you mentioned earlier, the key seems to be right now to me. Uh, turnovers. You said it. Turnovers it is. There's three of them. Guess how many touchdowns Bishop McCord has? Yeah, exactly. Three touchdowns. Um, it, not, not a coincidence. And Coach Myers knows that. And he's going to, you know, you, you, sometimes you look at a score and it, it tells you part of the story. Uh, Forrest Hills in his first half was not dominated up and down the field uh, or just outplayed by Bishop McCord. Three very untimely miscues resulting in Bishop McCourt taking the ball over and, and some good field position. Uh, you know, it is what it is. The score, the scoreboard never lies, but there's always a story within the story and a game within a game. You know, talking about our, our new stadium here, if you look across the field, you can see the light standards, and you see lights about halfway up that point upward. Unusual as it is, that uh, the, the new technology has those lights pointing upward to... to highlight the sky of, for punts and, and high you know, plays that way. Uh, and yet, the old lights used to light up the whole area around the stadium. But, and now it's just right centered right down in there. You get a good look at the light posts I'm talking about shining upwards. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. There, there, there are less you know, light poles than there were before. These uh, LED lights are... Oh, we have a reverse on the kickoff yeah. return. Very nice. Yeah, Crawley looking to light it up. Trying to stay inbounds. Trying to cut back. it back. Hang on to that ball. What a, what a great idea. Great call. Why not mix it up a little bit and throw a reverse on the kickoff. See if you can't sneak a score in before the half. Take some momentum into the locker room. Hey, well, they've got the ball in McCourt territory. Or McCourt 45-yard line, 44-yard line on a nice play. Nicely designed. Ooh. Reverse on a kickoff. Damon was tiptoe on the sidelines there. It was dangerously close to stepping on the white line, but kept in bounds, cut back. Nice job. All right. With one minute and 26 seconds to go, Forest Hills will put the ball in play, 46-yard line. I would bet they're going to go to the air. That's my thought, but they're not lining up spread out much. Not. Let's see. 
do have three timeouts remaining. Oh, look uh, out. Zach's in trouble. Oh, screen. screen is set up nicely. Uh, there's the flag. It did come out. Block in the back. Yeah. It looked like it, it was possibility, and uh, the side judge there was digging for his flag and caught us. Pretty nice athletic play by Zach to get that ball out as he was being hunted by a host of crushers. There it is. Got the ball out to Jake Delick and uh, had first down yardage, if not for the block in the back. Well-designed play, but McCourt had a, a big play called back, and Forest Hills just had one also. And that one was right in front of us. We saw it coming. Yeah, yeah. That's it's tough to lay off when you're in your full speed and first and thirteen. All right, at the forty-seven. Myers again, screen the other way. Screen the other way. This one to Richardson. Ball was thrown high. Dangerous passes. That one was sniffed out by the Crusher defense. Uh, they have a lot of pressure to put on Myers. Fifteen yards behind the line of scrimmage. Screen plays are uh, such a such a team effort and such a timing uh, play for everybody to be on the same page on. As uh, linemen have certain responsibilities, you got to wait and release and can't be you know, an eligible downfield. Really tough plays to work, but man, when they do, they could really pop. Court is going to take the yardage on that penalty and uh, make Forest Hills go a little further. They could have declined and second down, but at this point in time with a minute and 12, they want them to have Forest Hills to have a longer field to get down. First and about uh, 18. Ooh. Nice tackle by Grant Jean Genet over on the uh, far side of the field in front of the McCourt bench. Brings up second and 13 with 45 seconds on a turning clock. Myers rolls out to his right. Oh, nice try by Delic. Man, had to hear the footsteps there. Will Miller, the quarterback, now playing in the defensive backfield, closing in on him and put the lick on to jar the ball loose. Third and 13. 31 seconds to go in half. Thirty-one seconds to go, third down thirteen. Might as well take a shot. Zach with time to throw. It throws a real nice dart down the right side of the field. That's first down yardage. Clock will stop on the first down. And I believe Forest Hills will take a timeout. Number two, Brad Madigan on the reception. And we still got a chance to make a little, a little dent into this lead here. Forest Hill still has two remaining timeouts. Yes, yeah, so that 23 seconds is a lot longer than it looks with two timeouts at your disposal. It means you can use the center of the field on a reception and still have time to call a timeout. Be nice to put some points on the board. Yeah, yeah, the you're right. The entire field is in play. You don't have to worry about trying to get the ball out of bounds or clock it. Some of your best plays right now, Coach Myers is thinking. What has looked the best for us in practice or in our first four contests? Um, you know, after scouting this Crusher defense, what's going to hit? Let's let's call it right now. Well, let's see what these young Rangers can pull off now with 23 seconds to go. They come out with a first and 10. 
but that's not so important as it is the fact that they are on the 28-yard line. Yeah. Meyer throwing some nice balls. Drops back again. Flushed out of the pocket to his left. He's going to tuck it and keep it and slide ahead for a, a modest gain of maybe four, five. Timeout again. Four stills. 16 seconds to go in a half. Second down. Picked up only two. Myers that time rolled to his left uh, as a right-handed quarterback. It's always tougher to throw when you're rolling to your left and kind of throw back against your body. Um, but that was the wide side of the field, so sometimes that plays into a, a, a play call as well. Now the ball's in the center. He's had better success so far tonight rolling to his right, as most right-handed quarterbacks would. Right. And, of course... Zach's dad, Coach Myers, was an outstanding quarterback in his own right. Uh, besides an outstanding high school career, he had an outstanding college career, and he played professional uh, ball here in, in the Johnstown area. College uh, Geneva? I believe it was. Here we go. 16 seconds to go. Myers with the ball. Oh, ooh, number 30. There's the flag. I thought I saw a push in the back from up here, but far be it for me to make a, a call from 50 yards away. But the officials were all over it too and saw the pass interference. Now, what's the rule? So it's a spot foul or 15 yards? No, spot foul is the pros. It's 15 yards from the previous yep. spot. So it'll be first and 10 around. Well, it's going to be half the distance because they're at the 28. So I imagine they're going to put it down around the 14-yard line. That was Corey Colbert, uh, intended receiver on the play. First, I think that we've really seen him out, at least in a deep pattern. So trying to maybe catch the, the crushers off guard with you know sending an unlikely receiver downfield. Only 11 seconds remaining. Four still still has a timeout. Still a timeout. So if you don't get it in the end zone, there's still time. Call one timeout. Should have two shots at it from here. Uh, they had to call a timeout because the play clock was down. Play clock down, unsure where to line up. Some confusion there with, with personnel groupings and formation. Nope. Coach Myers not happy with uh, the quarterback in the offense there. And it's a huge situation. Now that takes the center of the field away. You almost have to take a shot into the end zone. If it's incomplete, you'll have another chance or the sideline pass, but uh, anything short of the goal line in play is probably going to end the half. 11 seconds ago, Bishop McCord is on top, 21-0. Putting points on the board right now for four stills would be crucial. Paramount. Interested to see if Bishop McCourt comes with some pressure here. How many men they send at Zach, pretty much knowing this is a pass play. Zach under center. Seth goes in motion. There's a pitch back to him. He wants to throw it. Little trickeration by the Rangers. Nowhere to go. Throws it up for grabs. That's picked off by Gina Jacquet, I believe. No. no. Number five. Oh. Dan, oh, sorry, Amir Ortega Andrews on the interception there. And that play will end the half with the fourth turnover by the Rangers when they were knocking on the door. So, at the half, Bishop McCourt, Crimson Crusher, Catholic High School on top, 21-0 against the Forest Hills Rangers. I love the play call. Give it a shot. Yep. Uh, and, and there's no fault for Seth Richardson throwing that ball up for grabs either. you got to give your player a chance. It's either that or, or run out of bounds. Uh, that turnover, you know, like you said, just kind of adds, adds to the story of the half. Um, move the ball well. Rangers not being outplayed and not done here tonight. The other festivities we got going on, it, it, as the band takes the field to perform what they've been working on all summer too, this is a big moment for them. We got homecoming tonight. Uh, everything coming together 
for a great night in Ranger Country. So enjoy the halftime festivities, everyone.
tonight, we are proud to introduce our 2019 Homecoming Court. Allison Boring. Allison is the daughter of Natalie Harrison and Jeff Boring of St. Michael. Allison is an honor roll student earning high honors. She is also the winner of an updo competition. Allison has been a cheerleader, member of the ski club, and attends Votech for cosmetology. Her future plans are to own her own boutique. Allison would like to thank her family, friends, boyfriend, and mom for always being there. She's being escorted tonight by her mother, Natalie. Allison Boring. Liz Zydell. Elizabeth is the daughter of Sarah and David Zydell of Salix. Elizabeth is a member of the golf team, the basketball team, and is an honor roll student. She is a District 6 medalist in golf, a Laurel Highlands Athletic Conference champion in basketball, and a three-time district champion in basketball. Elizabeth has also competed in the Southwest Regional Golf Tournament. She's involved with SAD, JCJCS, and is the senior class secretary. Her future plans are to attend college to study exercise science and physical therapy while continuing her golf career. Elizabeth would like to thank her parents, coaches, friends, and boyfriend for always being supportive. She's being escorted tonight by her dad, David. Elizabeth Zydell. Grace Edsel. Grace is the daughter of Dolores Hoffman of Salix. Grace is a member of cheerleading and has participated at the state level in cheer. Her future plans are to attend college to study physical therapy. Grace would like to thank her family, friends, coaches, and her mother for everything they have done to help her get where she is today. Grace is being escorted tonight by her mother, Dolores Hoffman. Grace Edsel, Rebecca Williamson. Rebecca is the daughter of Laura and David Williamson of Johnstown. Rebecca is involved with drama club, dance, band, chorus, NHS, forensics, Spanish Honor Society, and 4-H. She volunteers at Best of Friends, is on honor roll receiving highest honors, serves as the NHS historian, 4-H Rabbiteers treasurer, and the 4-H Dairy Club historian. She received the American Legion Medal Award and was a district forensic winner, a state forensics competitor, an Isaacs nominee for vocal performance, and the second runner-up in the Cambria County, Somerset County, OYW scholarship competition. Rebecca's future plans are to attend college to study veterinary medicine. She would like to thank her parents, sister, and the entire drama club for pushing her to be the person she is today. She's being escorted tonight by her dad, David. Skyler Hostetler. Skyler is the daughter of Kim and Joel Holstetler of New Germany. Skyler is a member of NHS, Student Council, FBLA, SAD, Concert Band, and Drama Club. She is a junior teacher at Out of His Mind Dance Studio and also helps coach the juniors of the competition dance team. She has earned Miss Dance Pennsylvania second runner-up, Celebrations Dancer of the Year, Encores the Discovery Spotlight Scholarship winner, and Dance Masters of PA Modern Scholarship winner. She has also performed in dance video shoots from Ohio to Miami, Florida. Skylar's future plans are to attend either Seton Hill University or Pace University in New York City to study student commercial dance and arts and entertainment management. She would like to thank her dad, mom, and sister for all of their love and support over the years. Thank you, Rose, the DiPola family, Nellie Kearney, and Michelle Ed for being a second family to her. She loves you all. Escorted by her dad, Joel. Peyton Staller. 
Hayden is the son of Jackie Stoller of New Germany. Hayden is involved with the hockey team, drama club, ski club, and attends Votech. Hayden's future plans are to attend the Global Powerline Academy and with plans on becoming a lineman. He would like to thank all his teachers, his family, and his faith in the Lord above for all his success. He is escorted tonight by his mother, Jackie. Joey Schrader. Joey is the son of Kathy and Jeremy Schrader of Southport. Joey is a member of Forensics, FBLA, Yearbook Club, JCJCX, and is an honorable student. Joey won a $2,500 grant through the Pittsburgh FBI for the school media program. He serves as the president of the Yearbook Club and volunteers at Prince Galitzin State Park and the Presbyterian Village in Hollidaysburg. Joey's future plans are to attend the Conema School of Nursing to become a registered nurse. He would like to thank everyone who has been a part of his life. He hopes to make you proud as he embarks on his journey into the future. He is being escorted tonight by his mom, Kathy. Lo Ayers. Lo is the son of Kathy Ayers of Salix. Lo is involved with the ski club and environment teams. Lo is an honorable student and a host at Applebee's. Lo's future plans are to attend college to study environmental science. He would like to thank everyone who came to support the Forest Hills Rangers tonight. He is escorted this evening by his mother, Kathy. Robbie Sibby. Robbie is the son of Denise and Sean Sibby of Salix. Robbie is involved with his church youth group, enjoys riding ATVs, and has several jobs. He also studies at the project. Robbie's future plans are to pursue a career in underwater welding. He is being escorted tonight by his mom, Denise. Nathaniel Harris. Nate is the son of Catherine Holdsworth of Summerhill. Nate's a member of the football team, starting on the both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. He is also a volunteer firefighter at the Summerhill Borough Fire Department. His future plans are to enlist in the Army or Air Force to become a military policeman, then become a state police officer. Nate would like to thank Coach Myers for believing him this season and Mrs. Cesario for providing him with snacks on game days. Our 2018 homecoming king and queen, Avery Cummings. Avery studies at Penn State Altoona and is a freshman. She hopes to earn her degree in veterinary and biomedical sciences. Philip U. Haas studies at Robert Morris University and is a freshman. He hopes to earn his degree in actuarial science. The 2019 Homecoming Court. And the moment you've been waiting for, the 2019 Homecoming King is Hayden Stoller. The 2019 Homecoming Queen, Allison Boring. Congratulations, Hayden and Allison. Back for the second half kickoff now. The Rangers will receive down 21 0. Ball will be received by Richardson and a reverse. Reverse again to Damon Crawley. And we have a penalty marker on a play. 
around the uh, 21 yard line. Usually that signals a penalty on the receiving team. Let's see what we have. Rangers had some success with that reverse on uh, on a kickoff in the opening half. Go back to the well, try it again. You can always fake the reverse. Just keep it keep it out there as an option to uh, watch for. A block in the back against Forest Hills. Put the ball in play now. First and ten around the eight yard line, seven yard line. Block in the back. All right, in a little bit of a hole here. Crawley in motion and a swing pass incomplete. I'm trying to get the ball to... Uh, Playmaker in space there with some blockers out in front of him. Just couldn't convert. Rangers offense makes you want to cover the whole field, both vertically and horizontally. <laughs> Second and ten. Crawley in motion. Ball ends up in Seth Richardson's hands. Uh, looks like no gain third and ten. We're honored tonight to have us with us in the booth. Mike Mastovich from the Tribune Democrat. Always interested in what he has to say in the daily paper. Very knowledgeable sports person who's mm. covered sports across the country. Does a great job, been doing it a long time. You're not saying he's old. You you said that. <laughs> Myers back. Goes back across his body. Oh, he gets a corner there. Oh, man, he would have had some room to run. That's Matt again on the catch. Nice job finding him by Myers. Rolling to his left, throwing back against the grain. Fourth and one. Just ah, man. short. <laughs> I think the offense is staying on the field. Is that right? That would be interesting. I'm not certain. I saw Zach trot back out there. And yes, they're going. Looks like they're going for it in the regular formation. Fourth and one. A couple things they may try to draw them off sides. Yeah, yeah. Watch for that. No, nope. nope. they're going for it. Second effort. Oh. I think got it. Wow, that was a gutsy call. I that like it. says a lot. I wanted to say it before the snap, so I wasn't just piling on, but I like it. Because of the score. You're not playing just to stay in the game. Nope. Coach Myers is saying, we're down three scores. If we're going to win the game, we need to go score right now. I don't care where we are in the field. We don't get it. They score and maybe put a nail in the coffin. Uh, but you're still playing to win the game. I like the message. As I said, that says a lot. Uh, Zach, nowhere to go. He had, they were playing meet me at the quarterback there, and two guys converged on 16. He had to go down. Second and long. We have about 17 to go after that loss. Oh, nice Seth cut trying by to bounce Richardson. it. Yep. Nice game. And it takes up that second and long, brings up a third and five. Third and five, yeah. You know, I, I know the way our cameras are focused. You're, you're seeing the visitor side of the field. And the stands are, they have a lot of people there from Bishop McCourt. And, you know, this, 
but it's the, the turnout on the Forest Hill side is, is very, very nice. The stands are full of people. There we the got the camera lines. panning backwards for us. Nice job down there, Kim. The sidelines are Thank lined you. heavily. Got cheerleaders tossing out some footballs to the fans. Yeah, very nice turnout for all the festivities this evening. All right, Scott, what's your prediction here now? We're looking at fourth down and three. <laughs> yeah. If we're going by what he did last time, it's almost like, why why wouldn't you? Yeah. If you're sending that message once, press send again. There we are. We actually get a little bit of air time here. This is rare. <laughs> This is where the magic happens. Fourth and three, they're going for it. Short drop. Ah, complete. Little hitch route thrown out there to Madigan. Would have had enough for the first down. Ball may have been tipped, but it was, it was a little low and a tough catch. So they McCourt takes over on downs, first and ten at the Forest Hills 27-yard line. A short field for them. And as we saw in the first half, they have a very strong power running game yeah. with Bear and uh, Miller. And you just think that this is, you know, okay, it was a gutsy call. I always second-guess things, but uh, they're out to win the game. And you, you punt there, what do you, what do you get out of it? You're yeah. down three scores, and maybe Bishop McCord is 20, 30, 40 yards deeper at the most from where they are right now, and they're going to continue to pound the ball. You're playing to win the game. You play to win the game. Yep. Number 77 on the stop there for the Rangers. Who else? Brendan Bear with the carry. And Gavin Blau with the stop. Miller flanked by Bear and Artery to his right. Shotgun snap. Give is to Bear. Tries to bounce it to left. Hang on there, 24. Nice play. Bryson Rear getting in there, making some noise. Tough guy, number 24, Bryson Rear. Nice to call his name in the backfield there. I just received some bad news, Scott. I did not win the 50-50. Ah, so you can't retire. Oh, you did retire. Yeah, but I've kept my string alive of never winning. Congratulations. All right, here we go. Thank you. Third and 11. Pitch deep in the backfield. Oh, nice uh, yeah. job tackling by the Rangers on that play. That's Nate Vamos getting the carry. I think first time we called his name for Bishop McCord tonight. Deep pitch, trying to get a head, head of steam and, and run downhill. But Brad Madigan with the initial hit, I believe, on that play. And he joined by four other Rangers. That's a way to swarm the ball. Coach, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say fourth down and 13 to go. You know, if the Rangers can stop him here, it makes that... Uh, fourth down attempt by the uh, Forest Hills before, and Coach Myers seemed very gutsy and Absolutely. very right. All you lost is a, is a few minutes. Yeah. Crushers keep it oh. on the ground. He squirts free. Reverses field. Short of the first down. Uh, Forest Hills will take over on down. Hey, stand up tall there. Amir Ortega Andrews making moves on moves there, hitting the juke stick, but uh, Forest Hills was able to corral him before reaching the line again. And it'll be Forest Hills ball at the 26-yard line. Officials timeout. Love it. Coach Myers before the game uh, applauded his team. Yeah, they're 0-4, but for the way they, they come to work every day of practice, uh, the way they don't quit in games last week down a little bit to Somerset, came back and almost got the win. Uh, the resilience, the, it's, it's the process. And, uh, you, you, have to, you have to love the grind because that's, that's exactly what it is. Official timeout was uh, they escorted number 22, Jake Telic, to the sideline. He was checked by a trainer. Uh, 
I'll have to see what happens with Jake as he comes we'll back in. See if in. Kim can get us an update uh, on that. It looks uh, like he's up and moving around. That's good. That's a good sign. Sweep around the right side. Damon Crawley picks up about four, second and six at the 30 yard line. Four fifty. Four minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. just found out the bad news that I didn't win the 50-50 was $818 that I didn't win. Huh. Do you know who won, Jim? I do not. Will be announced shortly. A winner has appeared in the booth. Or maybe not. <laughs> He'll have a lot of friends. Yeah. All right, third and five. Blitz right. coming by McCourt that time. Zach with time, puts it up for grabs to Madigan, looking for a flag, didn't see one coming there. Pass a little high down at a 40 yard line to McCourt. Now, we have fourth and five. Yeah, call it. What are we doing yeah. this time? It keeps getting fourth and a little longer. A little first longer, I know. One, the, fourth and three, does, now fourth and does five. Does Coach Myers have a breaking point? It must be fourth and six. <laughs> <laughs> And Jake Delick's right leg was taped up a few places, and uh, he is looks like he's good to go. Ready to go back in. Good job. Nice punt there by Madigan. It was just running a deep route. Comes back now to kick. Uh, nice run back there by number six, Jordan Page from Bishop McCourtney. He's knocked out of bounds uh, just across the 40-yard line, called the 39. First and 10, Bishop McCourt. Three minutes and 33 seconds. In the third quarter remaining, and McCord is up 21 0. You know, in the rich history of Forest Hills, we had Coach Chuck Sponsky here for eight years from 66 to 73, and then Coach Bailey took over for 45 seasons. And now Justin Myers begins his stint. Wonder how long Justin will be here. Hopefully, it's a long time to guide this green and gold contingent. Love to see it. The model of consistency and continuity really speaks a lot for a program. Rangers take it away. Damon Crawley takes it away. He's there. Down the sidelines. It's a foot race. He is gone. And there's a turnover and a turn of events and a touchdown for wow. the Rangers. When Damon Crawley gets the ball in his hands with some green in front of him, <laughs> he's gone. That boy can pick it up and lay him down. Rangers get on the board with three minutes and 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. That's what you expect. You know, are we winding down here? Are we going to run out the clock? There's that resiliency. Rangers all swarming to the ball. And when you do that and you're holding a guy up, one of the other guy's job is to try to, to rip that ball out. What a play. What a turnaround. I'm going to see if I can... Uh Get Mr. Mastovich to tell me what yard line he picked that up from. 40. He picked it up from the 40 of the 40 yard return. 60, 60 the other 40 yard return. And the yeah. kick is good. That's Lucas May, number 42, with a nice kick, making it 21 to 7, a two score contest. 60 yard fumble return. And we got a flag maybe. Let's see what the officials say. Referee Bill Wolf. Illegal formation. We'll have a retry. Yeah, that Five yards deeper. Ball will be spotted at the eight. I always thought it was a little funny that high school always spotted their balls, their uh, extra point attempt at the three yard line when the pros do it at the two. Not anymore. High snap. Nice job. High snap. Nice job by the holder. Who's the holder? Is that Brad Madigan? 
deserves some credit there handling that ball. And another nice job All by right. uh, Lucas May knocking it through the uprights there. There we go. 21-7. It's official. So, with three minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Four Sills gets on the board to make it 21-7. To recap the, the scoring at uh, 339 in the first quarter, Will Miller had a 19-yard run Hazlett kick, first of three successful PATs. And Brandon Bear had a three-yard run. And later in the second quarter, a five-yard run by uh, Brandon Bear again with Hazlett doinking it in for a 21-0 lead. And now, finally, Forest Hills gets on the board with 3.17 to go in the third quarter when Damon Crawley basically took the ball away from a crusher at their at the uh, Forest Hills 40-yard line, returned at 60 yards for the score, with Lucas May tacking on the point after. Setting the score now at 3.17 to go with 21-7 in favor of Bishop McCord. Maybe, maybe we can see a uh, momentum switch and a turn of events here in favor of the green and gold. We saw the reverse of uh, what happened in the first half. We talked about turnovers being important. How, yeah, Proves how it again. No whistle there, so the Rangers still pursuing the tackle. Uh, and you got to think they're coming out with a little more fire, right? Right now, a little bit of life. Well, that kick was uh, a bit of a shorter kick and a return to the 38-yard line of Bishop McCourt. First and 10 from that spot. McCourt takes it back on the ground. Up the gut, two-yard gain. Brandon Bear. I could see McCourt thinking that, let's, let's see if we can get a clock-churning drive here. Eat up some time. Absolutely. Rangers can go three and out. That would be huge. You got a clock eater in Brendan Bear and, and Miller in this offense, though. Up the middle again. Another three, four yard gain. Brings up to about a third and five. Just falling for you. When you when you look at the line of scrimmage and you look at the trenches, there there is a size advantage that that's visible most of the way across the board there on the side of Bishop McCourt. Uh, Really credit the Rangers, though, somewhat undersized up front uh, for battling these these bigger players and tackling a really, really strong runner tonight. He's, he's had some good runs, but, man, the Rangers keep coming at him. Third and five. Oh, uh -oh. I think it's going to be... I, I, I don't know. Well, I think it's going to be against the... Rangers, Rangers is yeah. what I thought. Yep. Infraction, neutral zone infraction. You get that. Uh, may, maybe change his cadence a little bit. Seemed like a couple guys jumped. Well, that's something a quarterback can really do if they, they lull you to sleep all night with the same cadence and the same call in their voice, and all of a sudden they, you know, they change it and put inflection somewhere else. You, know, you just kind of become used to the same sound. And, in a crucial moment when you need five yards, you can really get that, get a defense to jump it time to time. Bear picks up four. That's Breswick again in on the tackle. He... Maybe a three yard gain there, second and seven. It used to be an old saying years and years ago, it was uh, three yards and a cloud of dust. Well, here's three yards and some chopped up tires. Yeah. Fifty-two seconds to go in the first, in the third quarter rather, and the ball is now in Ranger territory. Play clock click, kick, ticking down. Excuse me, to eight seven. And just what Bishop McCourt wants. They snap it with three. That is a, a backwards pass. 
It should be spotted out of bounds at the 42-yard uh, yep. line. That was definitely backwards. But well, that's that skipped on this uh, carpeted surface. Sometimes that ball will take a funny bounce. I could, you know, I was praying for a Sunday hop for one of the Rangers to yeah. scoop and score, but uh, slick surface. And you can see the little black pellets come up from the carpet when the ball hits or when a uh, runner slides a little bit. The newly uh, installed turf here, at GH Miller Field. We have now a third and yeah. about 17, 18. Boy, really, really spread out here for Bishop McCourt. Kind of a empty backfield. five wides and an empty backfield. And a quarterback draw. That's a design run by Miller. He bounces it to the left side. Oh. Got a lot of room to run. Tries to cut it back, and he's knocked out of bounds by Madigan after a monster gain. What? Yeah, spread us out. That's yeah, a that's a design run. He took a took the snap, took two steps back, and. Um, was able to find a lot of running space there up the middle. Great play call by Coach Bazile and the McCourt staff. They had the Rangers spread out all over the field with their wide receivers, and he just went with the quarterback draw and a good speed that he has. Took that ball down to the 30-yard line of Forest Hills. First and 10. That was a field-flipping play. Certainly was, and momentum shifting as well. Clock has stopped here because the run ended out of bounds. Uh, Rangers showing no sign of quit. I love it. That should be the last play of the third quarter. Clock's winding down after no gain by the Crimson Crushers. And that play will end the third quarter with the score. Bishop McCourt, 21, four still seven. I was just going to say that uh, you can really see a difference, at least from this perspective with the LED lighting. Everything is so crystal clear in the camera. I'm hoping you, everyone can see a difference at home when they're watching. Yeah, on our monitors up here, it, we really see it. It really is nice nice and clear. Yes, what a difference. <laughs> Miller on a keeper on that plate. Takes the ball down to uh, third and two at the 22-yard line. Uh, we truly, have a, truly do have a beautiful facility here at Forest Hills now with the Stadium, the field house, the renovated baseball field, the brand new high school, and the uh, field house, the elementary school was renovated at the turn of the century. Uh, everything is just, just very nice school district, a great school district to be a part of. That last play, freshman Taylor Berta getting some action in on the stop there too. Uh, speaks to the youth here of the Forest Hills Rangers and they're giving, giving some guys some looks. Crawley again. Man, sniffing that play out. Brendan Bear was tackled for a loss on the play from third and two. We got to a fourth and about three or close to four. Big fourth down. Rangers come out of the stop here. They still have a full quarter to go, almost. Court's letting the play clock go down. I'll bet you they call a timeout here with a second or two on the clock. On the play clock. Yep, Coach Bazile was positioned over there by the side judge and I'm sure told him we're gonna we're gonna take one with a second to go here. Milk that clock down. Ten minutes and twenty-two seconds to go in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, I'm sorry, in the ball game. And McCourt is up 21-7. Fourth and three, they want to make sure they get the right play call in here too because um, a, a score here virtually puts the game out of reach. You know, you know always a chance, but um, that would be uh, kind of a dagger. So big play here on fourth and three. Conversely, we get the ball back and go score. Got a ball game. Absolutely. Right. 
Courts lined up. Just a keeper by Miller goes to the left side. Rangers are hanging on to him. I think he's short. I think we, you are correct, sir. Forest Hills takes over on downs. Yay. Knocked him out of bounds. The uh, 24, 25 yard line. First and 10, Forest Hills. Okay. Nice job, nice Just, job. Like you said, crucial possession coming up. Yeah, 10 plus minutes to go. Uh, and a long field to go. <laughs> Plenty of good food to go around tonight. All the festivities. And a hot sausage earlier. I know. Some uh, residual effects just occurring here as we speak. <laughs> Forest Hills took a timeout with, it uh, looks like they were a man short on the field and uh, had to take a timeout. And that, uh, that could be costly. That, yeah. It could be costly. You need to keep those in your pocket. All right, I'm curious, guys. Am I am I seeing things? Or are there blue lights on the backs of the coaches? Are, are, what are those? Do you see that? Yeah, those are um, those are the packs, the electric packs that go to their headsets so that they can communicate with the, the coaches up in the booth on the there. Oh, okay, yeah. on top. That's what I thought. I wasn't quite sure, though. Turned around and... Yeah. And I believe, Kim, I'm not 100% sure, is that when the team comes over to the sidelines, that's all fine. But if a coach goes out to the huddle, he has to take that off. Oh, good to know. Thank you. I am just amazed with the wealth of information both of you have. Obviously, when you play the game. Oh, thank you, Kim. I am. I'm just uh, really impressed. Well, Kim, you're easily amazed and easily impressed. <laughs> yeah, you're an easy, an easy audience. <laughs> I'll tell you. No, but I can tell, Jim, you must do some research every time you announce a game. You have to prior, don't you? We he try is, to do a little he, bit of that. He's yeah. nothing if thought. not prepared, that's for sure. That's Long one, sure. big shot. Kind of a, a three vertical look there, see if we can find a receiver up the seam. Uh, obviously, Bishop McCourt you know, expecting Forest Hills to take some sh some deep shots now. We're, we're ready for that. Zach Meyer shows a strong arm. That ball traveled at least 40, 40 yards in the air. I'll say. Don't, don't let the size fool you. That, that kid can sling it. By size, we're talking 5'10", 150. Not a big guy, but a big arm. Crawley with the ball. Crawley, boy, he is quick. Look at him going airborne there as he gets close to midfield. Picks up a big first down for the Rangers. Love the fight. It, it's, it's like he has a little dip, bit of a different gear sometimes. You know, he can put a foot in the ground and change direction so quickly. Rangers got to show a little bit of a sense of urgency here, down two scores with just under 10 minutes to play. They broke the huddle quickly. And like used the play clock just started now. Well, the ball was out of bounds. The play was out of bounds. Okay. Bounces Probably to the right again. again. Look at the move. Don't get loose with that football. Good fight. Almost a 10-yard gain. Yeah, I'm going to say gonna about nine. I'm going to give nine on that and say we've got a second and one. Yeah. That's accurate. The ball here right in front of us in the booth. Now, here's a situation like we talked about earlier. Okay, the play clock now, it started, it was at 35, now we're down to 28. So it's not a 25-second clock now because it starts right at the end of the play. The play was in bounds. Okay. Sweep left to Crawley. Picks up first down yardage. Down to the 42-yard line, 43-yard line. What a night. He's really putting together a 
nice stat sheet and just running really hard. In the first half was dominated time of possession by Bisham Court. I don't think that's the case in the second half. Horace Tills is really showing a lot of guts and determination coming back out here, making the score 21-7 with 8.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Crawley now motions out to the right. Zach looks his way. Of course they cover him up and Zach has to take a sack and a big loss. Big sack. Almost a 10 yard loss on that play. Wanted to get the ball to Crawley out here in the flat and give him some room to make a move, maybe in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And uh, you know, Bishop McCourt obviously has some spies on him wherever he, he goes. He was shadowed, and, and you know that that would be the thing to do if you were a McCourt coach. Keep your eye on the speedster, the playmaker. Brings us to a second and 19 here. Ball now on the bad side of the 50 on the 47. Seth Richardson splits out right. Taking a shot deep, Seth's direction. Got the man-to-man -man coverage. Boy, Ooh, flag, flag coming in, in there play. fairly late. Wow. I gotta be honest, I did not see a lot I did not either. of contact there either way. Be interested to see what the call is. See Coach Bazil on the Has opposite sideline. interference side on the defense. A little upset. Hey, he's got a better view than I do, but yeah, I think you and I both saw that play out there on, on an island. It didn't seem like a ton of contact, but hey, I'm not complaining. We'll take the call. No. Wait a minute. What are we doing the, here? The, the signal was pass interference. That's, not an, that's an automatic first down. And they didn't do anything. Maybe they pulled, picked up the flag. But the official did not signal that. I'm confused. Mike, was that pass or not? Pass was the first time. They didn't, they didn't, get they didn't work any yardage off or they didn't move the stick. But he did signal pass interference. Third and one. I'm a little unsure about that, that previous pass interference call. Uh, hey, uh, I saw Kim zero in on the flag on the field. Yeah, we. Yes. We saw the preliminary signal. No okay. automatic first down was awarded. Here we go. Third, Third and one. one. Gives to the up man. That's Bryson Rerick. Fighting forward. That's that enough yardage for a first is. down. Yep. All I could figure out on that play was that the, uh, as you and I said, we, we did not see anything that really looked like a flagrant pass interference. The one official was deep, called it. Perhaps the up official uh, coming in on the plate, they had a chat, talked about it, decided to pick up the flag. Perhaps, but I thought we were way back near midfield. and I thought the 15 yards were assessed, but nope. not the, no? No, nope. they just put it down at the previous spot. Okay. All right, here we go. First and 10. Two Rangers split wide out to the near sideline. Zach drops back, looks that direction, finds Seth Richardson in the, on the right sideline, and he fights his way down to the 15-yard line. Tick, tick, tick. We're down to 626. Down two scores. Here we go. First and 10. Four stills, 16-yard line. Nice, nice ball by Myers. Mm -hmm. Nice little route combination over here on the right side. Guy goes deep. Looks like we got a crusher down. Maybe a maybe a uh, equipment timeout. Not sure. That's that's quarterback Miller. Uh, Will Miller from Bishop McCourt. Now getting the attention of some coaches over there. Coach Bazil checking out his quarterback. Looks like she's rubbing out a uh, cramp or something cramp in the back of her shoulder. shoulder. Your shoulder yeah, yeah, right. Nice to see him up and up and healthy. Yes. Good ball player. All right, 
Forest Hills driving. Still a ball game. 21-7, they're down two scores. They've got the ball first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Optimally, they'd like to score quickly. Get a nice three and out by McCourt and get the ball in their own hands, their own hands again. That's, that's my dream. Dreams do come true. Hand off to Damon. Keeps it up the middle for a solid gain of maybe four or five. Like about four. Now the clock is not our friend. We better get moving here. Mm -hmm. Five minutes, 50 seconds to go. You know, in and out of that huddle, yes. Yep, we said before about they don't quit. I don't care how young they are. Yep. Uh, down 21 nothing. Love it. No matter the results of this game, they, they've showed the fans something here tonight. Oh. Ah. Pass incomplete. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know if that's the worst thing in the world. It looked like it was covered up. Maybe with his great moves, Crawley could have made something happen. But that does at least stop the clock. Had he gotten tackled in bounds for a minimal gain, the clock's running. Right. Tribute to Coach Myers and his staff about uh, getting these kids ready to play. When you come into a, a, a game 0-4, you're, you're, you're naturally going to be down. 0-4 and, and, oh, oh, and, and down 21 nothing at halftime right. and come out with this kind of fight. Love it. Crawley sprung ahead. That kid doesn't want to go down. He gets close to first down yardage there. Well, yeah, he, pa he passed that yellow line. Isn't that yellow line the first down line? No, that <laughs> you're talking about the <laughs> television uh, the oh. pros. That is a soccer mark on the field. Ah, okay, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Rangers out quickly. First and goal. Crawley again. Has room. Right inside. Yes. I He's in. Touchdown. I, there's a flag. I hate to rain on your parade, folks. There's a flag thrown. By the officials on the far sideline, I believe Forest Hills moved. Yeah, no, maybe, maybe it's on Bishop Court. Let's see, we get signal. It is a touchdown. Yes. Down stands. I think we had an illegal substitution by McCourt. Was it maybe 12 men? Possibly. Let's see what the official comes out with the signal. Illegal substitution. What? Penalize the defense half the distance to the goal for the for the point attempt. Is that what's the matter? You look confused. Uh, doesn't make sense to me. Okay, you're gonna have to they, explain that. But right now, okay. Rangers have opted to go for a two point conversion, and guess who gets it? Crawley up the middle, benefiting from the penalty. And you're gonna tell us why it made sense or why it didn't make sense. But the scoreboard. It's starting to make a lot more sense here for the Rangers as it's 21 to 15 with five minutes to go. The momentum, momentum has totally swung the Rangers' way. Now, what's going on with that penalty? All right. If you got an illegal substitution and you let the penalty, and there's a big conference right now down at the goal line by the officials. Yeah. If you're either going to say we're going to take the, the score, which is obvious, or the penalty, which you don't want to do. So, and then they they tack the penalty on, on the two point conversion and take it half the distance to the goal. That yeah. So you, make sense. If you take me. the result of the play, right. you don't take the penalty. There is no penalty. Right. The penalty's not enforced. Because. You've declined it and taken the result of the play. I understand what you're saying oh. now. Yeah. That. And uh, if it's if it's an illegal substitution, depending on when it happens, the officials can blow the play dead. Before the snap. Yeah. So, I, so, that, so then you, you would put four stills would have the ball back for uh, at the five yard line or whatever and go for the uh, go for it again. Wouldn't be a score. I noticed that huddle they were having was far away from the Crusher sideline and Coach Brian Mazil. I imagine he had some of the same questions that uh, we were discussing uh, just now. But hey, either way, it's immaterial right now. It's 21-15. <laughs> 
Oh, it's the ball game. Back. Yes. All right, 5.05 to go in the fourth quarter. Oh, are you kidding me? It's an offsides, and did you see what was it, what the Rangers were doing there? Yes, they were. Surprise onsides. And, and it wasn't going to surprise. You have to kick it deep now. Right. Well, you know what? That's a break. It's a break for four steals because the onside kick did not go 10 yards. It they would have been it, a penalty anyway. If they had the offsides, they're going to go back five yards. Okay, so we got the five yards. If five yards. Otherwise, yeah. we had an illegal touching at the 42-yard line. Now, I mean, and Bishop McCord is reacting and moving everyone up in preparation for an onside. I think now you dump it over their heads. And that's what I would think too. You kind of hit the ball if you can around the 40, 35-yard line. 35-yard line, where there's an opening and yeah. see what happens. They're going to kick it deep. Oh, well, and, and that's what we did. They're right going to hit the 34-yard line. They fall, I, I think that's almost best case scenario. Yeah. It's decent field position. Court will take over around the 25 yard line. Let's see where they spot it. Yes, maybe a blessing in disguise that that onside kick did not work. Definitely yep. agree with you there. 29 yard line. How many timeouts do we have left? Two, Kim. We burnt one earlier. Um, and, and, and my dad called it. That uh, was, you know, could come back to haunt you, and it, it may. Right. Let's hope not, but it 504, may. 504 to go in the game. Bishop McCourt up 21 15, a six point game. That's, that two point conversion could loom very large. Huge. The touchdown now gives us the lead, or it ties it with an extra point giving us the lead. I think McCourt's going to keep it on the ground again. Uh, they still have the lead. And, man, the Rangers are not backing down, not an inch. I'd love to see this rushing rushing statistics from the first half to the second half with Bishop McCourt and Brendan Bear. It's yeah. night and day. Very. Tail of two halves. Second and eight. Let's see if McCourt uses most of the play clock. They're yeah. down to 13 on the play clock now. Let's see how much of a hurry they're in. They've got to be telling them not to snap it till two, three. Snap was at four. At four. Bear with some explosion in his step this time. He must have heard me. He rumbles all the way down to the 48-yard line. Big first down. Stop the clock. will stop, of course, for the first down. Really looked like he had a little more in him that time. And it really exploded through that left side. First and ten, Bishop McCourt. To Bear off that left side again. Rumbles beyond midfield. Dragon Rangers with him. Out of bounds at least at the 46. 331 with a clock stop. Scott, I can remember it had to be 1996 when you were playing against Bishop Court in a monsoon at the Point Stadium. And uh, it, it was pouring. Yeah. It was a tremendous game. Very close game. Yeah. And if I recall, you had a, uh, an interception and a 15-yard pass interference penalty, both called on you. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Ah, <laughs> oh, the pass interference was a bad call. It was a terrible call. <laughs> I, was, I was on the infield of the Point Stadium. Yeah, I remember landing in the, in the mud of that. It was, we played yeah. in a lot of rain that year. Yes, yeah, we it was, did. It was 96. But, yeah, that was, I had that recessed in the back of my mind for a long time. I'm glad to what, what, the interception or the pass interference? The pass interference. Oh. <laughs> trying to think about that. But. Bad call. I've forgiven that official and moved on. Yeah, but you won the game. You won the game. Let's see if we can do that here again tonight. <laughs> oh. There's the artery. You know, it's bear, 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 and then... Change up with Artery. Uh, yeah. And then throw Will Miller in there for uh, for another change of pace. First down from a court yeah. at the 40-yard line. First really, really 10. nice uh, 
rushing attack. Yes. And, and the offensive line is, is doing a great job for Bishop McCourt. It's not just straight ahead blocking. They're running some traps and pulling some guards too. Those guys are doing a great job. Tick, tick, tick. We got to use, uh, you know, you think about using some timeouts on defense here before too long. Down to three minutes on a turning clock. Up the middle again. There's a flag. Uh, I thought I them. saw a, a face mask. I think we're looking at a hold. I think it's a face mask. Okay. Yep. You are correct, sir. Unfortunately. Fif Personal foul variety, 15 yards. There are two, right? They can get five. Or can yep. you still do that in high school? There's. Last I heard. Uh, I would think. Uh, Clock is running. Two minutes, 45 yeah, seconds ago. Big automatic first down on the personal foul call there. Come on, keep him out of the end zone. Bear off the right side, trying to bounce it. Swarm of Rangers coming after him. Pick up Ooh. maybe two. Yeah, minimal gain. Timeout is called by Forest Hills. Takes them down to one remaining timeout. Two minutes and 26 seconds to go. You know, I know we've spoken a lot about the, the facility here at Forest Hills, but we are uh, just in the final stages of this, the latest uh, renovation project, a $3.7 million dollar uh, athletic facility upgrade and renovation, which includes, of course, this combination football, soccer, and softball field, the high school baseball field, uh, which will be turfed on the infield, and the outfield will be uh, renovated somehow. You've got the track renovation, and New all the other. concession stand added on here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah we're very fortunate. Uh, and, and this has but been done with in the past without, I think it's been 24 years now without a tax increase in the district. Unbelievable. It is amazing. All right, let's go. Second and nine. Got to keep it on the ground, you would assume. Ah, uh, hard count again. On the Rangers, five yards. Pre-snap fouls will drive a coach nuts. What are you going to tell him? Look at the ball. All you got to do is watch the ball. And you're also telling him, let's make sure we're ready to get off at the snap. Uh, get sure. ready to go. Charge, charge, Oh, charge. yeah. Easier, easier said than done. Yeah. I, I I understand that. The muscles are all tensed up for sure. the charge. And you hear that little snap count variation. Yep. And yeah, I believe there's, there's some hard count. And he's varying his cadence. Second and four. Give the bear, hang on to him back there. That's a negative play. Loss of three down, back see, to the 20. I see Bryson Rierick, I see Seth Richardson back there. Man. Okay, 18 yard line. Four stills takes his final timeout. And you have to. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the call, and not that it matters, but um, if you don't, you're well under two minutes when that next, you know, the ball is snapped. Right. We've got third and, third and uh, nine. No, let's see, third and six on the 18, 19 yard line, and two minutes and 18 seconds to go in the game. So, everything's, if we stop them here, and one more play, fourth down. If you can turn the ball over, you can get the ball back with, you know, a minute and a half to go, perhaps. Maybe a little less than that. Never know. You just never know. That's why they, that's why they play it till the end, right? Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, Miller, under Miller bootleg. keeps it. Strung out nice by Crawley and Richardson. Really nice job. I like the play call. A little misdirection by McCourt. Not going to bear. And he keeps it on a, a bootleg. Eats a little more time. It on does. The clock, takes it down to fourth and about six or seven. And a minute and 55 on a turning clock. Uh, what, a, what a helpless feeling as an, as, on a defense when you're standing out there just watching that clock and those precious seconds tick away when... You just want a chance. You just want to get the ball back and give your team a chance. McCourt could take the clock down to a minute 25, roughly. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if they take it the whole way down and then call a timeout with another maybe a second to go on the play clock. I guess what's going to happen. You see Coach Bazile position again by the side judge. There you go. And, yeah, they did have two. And there's the timeout. They used all of the clock they could they took it down to a minute and 25 seconds fourth and goal uh, fourth I'm sorry fourth and seven to go and now you know what okay let's think about this fourth and seven mm -hmm. you're gonna run it you're gonna pass it what does it matter I would doesn't I, matter I would take a shot take you know if I were McCourt right yeah now, I'd playbook throw, is I'd wide open the ball sure uh, if, oh, if, well, it, wait. if it's incomplete the clock stops. If it's if it's uh, a running play and it's short, the clock stops on a change of possession. And I, I don't know enough to say uh, for Bishop McCourt, but having seen him tonight, do you think about kicking it and making it a two-score game? He's There's a good a kicker. I don't know yeah. if you, know, you have that kind of trust. Good thought. That pretty much ices the game. Yeah, and... No, that's the offense on the field. Right. As I ex expected, that's that's a pretty good field goal for any, uh, even a good high school kicker. Okay. Three out wide to the left. Going to take a shot. Inco and, oh. oh. I think that's going to end it for us. I think we have a, we may have a hold there. Oh, boy. Let's see. I didn't see, didn't see that. I didn't see a preliminary signal or anything. Discussing it on the field. Ho oh, ho! Wow. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. An eligible receiver downfield. Certainly so, didn't see pass interference. No. I wasn't sure, but okay. Uh, ineligible. So the yardage? No. No, be, because it's change of possession. They'll take, they'll decline a penalty, change of possession, first down, yeah. four stills. Result of the play. Like right. Still confusing about the uh, earlier call on the touchdown. Me too. But if we could get some clarification on that later. For now, there's bigger matter at hand. You got a minute and 20 seconds, no timeouts, and only about 80 yards to go. Nothing but net. So we can do it. You're saying there's we can a do chance. It. Myers back, rolls out to his right. Yes, 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 oh, yes. Got him in. Oh, just out of the outstretched <laughs> arms of Brad Madigan at the 45-yard line. Friends, if he catches that in stride, whoo. Wow. He had a chance. And I wonder how many of those little black beads he got in his mouth when he was flying <laughs> across the turf. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> 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 Second and ten. All right, Zach rolls out again. Going to go a little shorter this time. Thank you. It's wide of intended receiver Seth Richardson. All right, we've got to start thinking about the yardage too now. Third and ten. We've got to get yeah, a first down. Yeah, you've got to continue the drive. Yep. I love the shot play on first down. Almost connected. There has been a hook and ladder in the playbook for as long as I can remember under Coach Bailey. I wouldn't be surprised if 
I think it's this is the time. Still huh? there, and if there's a time for it. <gasps> oh, big collision over there on the far sideline. Uh, two crushers colliding with do it, do everything, do it all. Damon Crawley had himself a really, really nice night. Fourth down, 10 yards to go. One minute and three seconds to go in the ball game. Okay, everybody. Bishop McCord is up 21-15, six-point deficit. And right now it's uh, down to cases, do or die. Rangers spread wide. Five receivers into play. Little slant to Seth. Oh. Close to first down yardage. Clock correct? stops. It was. It looked like a completion. Okay. Yes, it was. Clock stops. He stop. is not moving. Yes, he got, is. Got there some he arms is. and legs moving. Kim, I can't Thank see. Thank goodness! Wow, yes, I was sure. really scared there for a moment. Yeah, took a shot in the back. Ugh. Got first down yardage. Big hit by Bishop McCourt. You see all the Rangers on the sideline immediately taking knee. As did the Bishop McCourt. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and I was going to say they would. The same for an opponent. Oh, thank goodness. Seth yeah. is getting up. Early signs are very good. Crowd encouraging him on here. It's okay. Uh, first and foremost, we hope he's healthy, but uh, logistically, he, he has to come out of the game now for a play. Okay. They get a new series. First and 10, 56 seconds to go. He just hit the line to gain. Now the clock is starting. The play was inbounds. They adjusted for the uh, injury in the time on the first down. 48-47. Myers back to pass, screen setting up pass. a middle screen. Incomplete. And Flag down. We have an eligible downfield, I believe. That's right. Yep. That's... <laughs> One of those things that's difficult with a screen pass. Linemen have a lot of responsibility. You got to know where you're at. And you can't get far beyond that line of scrimmage if you're a big boy. Okay, so Bishop McCourt elects to decline that penalty because the down is more important than the yardage. I might have gone the other way on that. I know. I was thinking it's uh, uh, five more yards to go for a touchdown. Yeah, That's what we need. He's going, looks looking deep. Oh, sidelines pass. Got him. He got it. Crowley, get out of bounds. He did. As he crosses midfield, I believe. That is a Ranger first down. This kid, these kids, these Rangers will not quit. 30 seconds to go in the ball game. Did 20. not get that. So I'm sorry. Did not get the half field or to midfield. Just shot. 48 yard line. Six second. I'm sorry. Six point differential here. Rolling to the right as he's been comfortable doing. Being chased. Takes a lick as he lets it go. Yes. Up for grabs. What a catch by Brad Madigan. We have no timeouts. We got to get down there and clock the ball or run a play. Now, are they allowed to hold him down like that? No. Well, it was a first down, Kim, so the clock's going to stop automatically to okay. move the chains. Until it's blown. There's Brendan Bear late and getting back. Now the clock has been wound by the official. We're And a pretty nice job by the Rangers to get lined up. Uh, everybody on sides. Get the center to quarterback exchange and clock the ball. Not quite. We have a flag ah, on the far side. Didn't for see it. Illegal shift. That means we didn't. we weren't set. Yep. Somebody was not yeah. set for the full second before the snap, so it'll be a five-yard penalty. Ah, it's tough with that. Hey, what a play. What a throw. Oh. Zach, Zach getting hit as wow. he lets it go. Brad going up and just... There's the call. But just ripping the ball away from the defender. We've seen some Ranger receivers make great plays tonight. 15 seconds ago. 30, 32 yards from, uh, from the big... Big payday. What a finish here. What a finish. Come on, Rangers. Taking Seth the shot Myers. to Seth. 
Two double coverage. That's intercepted by Bishop McCourt. Brought out of the end zone. And he's hit uh, out of bounds, and there's a, a flag. Uh, <sighs> and and there's another, another flag. flag. That's going to be unsportsmanlike. On somebody. Yeah. I think. Don't want to see it in that way. All no, right. you know, it looks like we had a late hit on the Rangers. And there's another, a, flag. another flag. And there's two uh, seconds to go in the ball game. Officials are about out of laundry. <laughs> I think that ball is going to be moved downfield a ways. A lot to sort out here. You know, my guess is we have a late hit out of bounds. Oh, there's yeah, another flag. flag. We're going for a record side. here. Yeah. We're going to have to start throwing hats. <laughs> okay, that's four, I think, four different penalties. Wait, this guy's coming over Wait, now to let, chat with let the let other ones. Let me come over in your huddle. Let's see here. I threw a flag, too. <laughs> Can I play? <laughs> You guys are so funny. Who's going to okay. pick all these up? Now, wait a minute. This is like my kids playing at home. Like, that's great. You're <laughs> making this mess. Who's going to clean it up? <laughs> now, we're writing all these things down because, well, you know what? You it, can't remember them. Well, that's that's one thing. But also, if you've got an unsportsmanlike, like, if you've got two on the same player, that's, uh, they're rejected, which means they can't play next week. Yeah. Then, so, then it gets serious. Yeah. you got to be careful here. And I, I think the coaches are, are telling their, their kids, you know, let's, let's be smart here now. It really is an unfortunate ending. Yes, to a great, it, great football game. A great game. football game. Can't say enough about what the Rangers did in the second half here. And, and to all this, it, Justin Myers and Brian Bazile do not want or condone their kids to, to do these things. These are 15, 16, 17-year-old kids um, playing an emotional game and sometimes making some mistakes. Yeah. Now, the game would have been over in two seconds. However, until we get this all written down, it may be two to 22 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the tour of the athletic field event that's <laughs> scheduled, they, like it might be happening while the while the game's still going on. We'll have all to right, watch here for we go. spectators. Okay, to sort, sort that out, we had a late hit out of bounds, which is 15 yards. Then we had two unsportsmanlike conducts on four stills. So right now we've got 45 yards, three 15 yards on four stills. That's offset by one unsportsmanlike on the court. So that's just 15 from the 45 is 30. So we will have a 30 yard net penalty against four steals. McCourt will put the ball in play with two seconds and to go. I expect a kneel down. In a pear tree. Yeah, I expect a kneel down at this point. And uh, they are in yeah. victory formation right now. And you know what? We've talked a lot about four steals. Credit Bishop McCourt oh, too with playing a very good game, a Hard good fun. game plan. And the final score here, G.H. Millerfield, four steals, falls to the McCourt crushes 21 to 15. Do you a real quick scoring recap here, Scott. We have McCourt scoring with Will Miller at 339 of the first quarter and Hazlett with first of three successful extra points for a 7-0 lead. Brendan Bear, a three-yard run, made it 14-0 for McCourt. And then 21-0 uh, with a five-yard run by um, Brendan Bear again. Four stills answered with a 60-yard fumble recovery. Uh, return by Damon Crawley. Lucas May kicked the extra point, made it. 21-7, and then Crowley had a five-yard run and uh, made it 21-13. to 13. Four steals went for a two-point conversion successfully and set the final score at 21-15 and a very nice high school football game. You see the, Chris, the players and the coaches congratulating each other. Coach Bazil out there congratulating the four steals Rangers. Um, tale of two halves. Bishop McCourt won the first half. Four steals won the second half. We talked about it in the first half of play, how everything was about turnovers. There were four turnovers, and 
they had three touchdowns. That's Second right. half, we kind of got the, the breaks a little bit more, a big turnover here and there. The only turnover we had was the interception to end the game, essentially, which you got to throw it up there and give your guy a chance. But um, both coaches should be extremely proud of their team. Similar to last week at Somerset, down, fought back. When you got a young, un in inexperienced team, you look for the fight. You look for the kids that don't quit. If I know these kids and these coaches, they won't. It's been an honor to uh, do this game with you, old man. I always enjoy watching football with you, no matter if we're talking about it or, or, or just watching it. Uh, and uh, a great way to um, kind of start a new era here at Forest Hills. We hope that um, you know we get to do it again, and, and things are always looking up for this program. You have no idea how much of a pleasure this is for me to work with you, Scott. And I want to say what a great job our sideline reporter, Kim Hostetler, does for us. And, of course, Jay Elias in, here in the booth with all the technical things. We'd like to thank the Forest Hills administration and superintendent, uh, our superintendent and administrators of high school and principals. Great job, everybody, and thank you very much. This is Scott Lashinsky and Jim Lashinsky saying thank you and good night. <laughs>